Now Michigan State, they have won the coin toss. And they have elected to a deferred possession until the second half. Purdue will receive this kickoff. Today's opening kickoff brought to you by K Jewelers. Kevin Muma will put foot to leather and kick this one off from the 30. Line drive kick fielded at the goal line. Al Tariq McBurst is going to bring it out. And McBurst crosses the 20. Good decision. Picks up a couple more yards than they would have got. If it had just been a touchback ball, it would be spotted at about the 23 yard line, making it the 22. And here come the offense of Danny Hope's Purdue Boilermakers, making his fifth start of the year, Rob Henry. And Rob Henry has that glove on his hand, boarded the index finger, had an abrasion. We'll see number one in terms of his ability to grip the football, and then number two, Eric, can he spin it or throw it down the field with accuracy? Henry almost uh, as many yards rushing as throwing this year. They start with a reverse. Al Tariq McBurst has the ball and barely gets back to line of scrimmage. They're going to say he gains a yard, maybe two. If you're looking for Penn State and Indiana from Landover, Maryland, our other Big Ten Network game today, go to BigTenNetwork.com slash GameFinder to get that channel number. So, uh, as per usual, Purdue starts out with a little bit of trickery to begin the ball game. They start with the reverse. It picks up a pair of yards. Out of the shotgun, we'll see Rob Henry almost exclusively out of the shotgun today. Wants to throw his first pass. A little bit wide of the mark, looking for the tight end, Kyle Adams. Take a look at the Rotel Velveeta starting offense because you can't start your game day without their famous queso dip. Up front, it's been a consistent starting five all year long for Purdue. Dennis Kelly now making his 23rd straight start. Get out of Chicago Heights, Illinois. Backs and receivers. Another Chicago guy, Dan Durking. Playing in his final road game. Second generation Boilermaker, his dad Scott. One of the best runners in the history of Purdue. But those backs and receivers just really have been crushed with injuries all season long for Purdue. Henry to throw again. This one sails high. And that's going to do it. It's going to be a three and out. And Eric, we got an early snapshot of exactly how Michigan State wants to defend Purdue. Get them in third and long situations. Then you got to test the finger and the arm of Rob Henry. Good start for State to get off the field on third down. Left footed Cody Webster will put it away. Average is close to 42 yards per boot with a long of 79. Dangerous man returning it. Keyshawn Martin back after an injury. He leads the Big Ten in punt return yards. Driven back to the 26 yard line. Nowhere to go. He is scrunched after a return of two yards. It's a punt of 51 and just a two yard return. Big Ten football is brought to you in high definition by Phillips Televisions. Well, here comes that Michigan State Spartan offense led by Kirk Cousins, Jr. from Holland, Michigan. And Eric, he's really the field general for Michigan State. Good from the neck up, smart quarterback, high football intelligence, and just has great command of this offense. Tight end Charlie Gant goes in motion. And they start on the ground. Edwin Baker tries to bounce it outside, and Baker Stumbles forward to the 33 yard line, gain of five. Take a look at the Rotel Velveeta starting offense for Michigan State up front. Three seniors, but we want to talk about a sophomore and Chris McDonald. He missed the Michigan game, or the Minnesota game with an injury, but he's back healthy. That should be a big boost to what they're trying to do. Backs and receivers, Mark Dell, the senior. He has 41 catches on the year. Of those 41 grabs, 34 of them have resulted in Spartan first downs or touchdowns. We're on the left side now, Baker picks up one. It'll bring up third down and short. Now for the auto owners insurance starting defense for Purdue. Got to mention Ryan Kerrigan. Last week, just a man among boys against Michigan. Ten tackles, four of them sacks. He's the Big Ten's all-time leader in forced fumbles. Linebackers Dwayne Beckford has been consistent all season long and in the defensive backfield Albert Evans missed a handful of games. He's healthy now and he's made a difference in the last two games that the Boilermakers have played. He's the quarterback of the defense on the back half. Third down and four Cousins with pressure 
gets it off complete. It's going to depend on the mark. Charlie Gant pushes his way forward. And it looks like he's going to have it up for the first down. Well, and that was all second effort by Gant because he actually cut this route a little short. Now, you're going to see him come across. He's short of the sticks. But once, once he catches, watch this effort to get moving forward. He picks up yards after contact to move the chains for Michigan State. And that was short of the first down marker. If he had just fallen down, that would have been a punting situation. But Gant has got enough for the first down. He's now got 16 catches and has 200 yards exactly on the year. Quick snap. Trying to get the ball out into space to Keyshawn Martin. Works well. Martin close to the 50-yard line. Martin's been missing the last couple of weeks with an ankle injury, but he's back there and looks like he's healthy. Yeah, and Martin's not their most polished receiver, but he's perhaps their best receiver in terms of getting the ball in his hands and run after catch ability. So they like to isolate him, get him out in space on the corners one on one. He usually wins that matchup. They're going to give him 10 yards on the catch and run. So it's going to be a first down for Michigan State. All right at the 50 yard line. Two tight end formation. They want to throw out of it. This time they go left side. B.J. Cunningham is tripped up after a gain of three. Well, you Ricardo know, Michigan Allen State. with the tackle. Hey, Eric, you know Michigan State, they love those quick screens. They like to just pop it out there to the wide receivers and force Purdue's defensive backs to come up and make plays. The guy who made that play, Ricardo Allen, he has really come of age the last couple of weeks. I know you're high on number 21 for Purdue. Yeah, you're exactly right. He's a special player. Watch him today. He gets his hands on the football. Another quick screen out right side. Martin with the ball, his second catch, and rumbles down to the 35. Gain of 12. Now for the ING direct edge to the game. Chris, what do you have? Well, for Purdue, it's absolutely swarming the killer bees. Bacon Bell got to get those guys on the ground. Don't give them extra yards after contact for Michigan State. Force Purdue to be run dimensional, stop the running game, and make them have to win it by throwing the football and testing that finger of Rob Henry. Michigan State, they've thrown four times, completed all four passes. Haven't taken any shots down the field, but they're moving the ball effectively. Big hole on the right side. Edwin Baker gets another five yards for the Spartans. Eric, when I study running backs, I always look for what's their longest run from scrimmage. And when you look at Baker, he has an 80-yard run this season, so it tells you he has tremendous linear speed. He's a productive back. He only needs six yards for 1,000. So he's the guy that really grinds it out up front. Le'Veon Bell also has a run for over 70 yards. So these guys have tremendous vertical speed. You got to get them before they get started. See Baker's numbers, top right hand portion of your screen, three rushes, 15 yards. Second down and one. Again, Baker gets to the 25 yard line. Looks to be enough for the first down. Needed one, I think he got two. And you, you have to give some props to the offensive line of Michigan State. Road graders up front, big but athletic. They get good punch, good with their hands. And so far, They've been controlling the line of scrimmage against Purdue. Tight end Brian Linthicum comes out of the game. On this first down and 10, Charlie Gant replaces him. Well, the last six plays for Michigan State, four of those six plays have resulted in first downs. Effective opening drive for the Spartans. Play action. Cousins to the end zone. Has a man. It's down. Touchdown. Effectively, it sets up the play action, works to perfection there. Well, you said that exactly right. Now, Logan Link, left side of your screen, he gets a little nosy, so he's going to come downhill. And once he does, you're going to see them pop this pass right behind him. Link has almost 80 tackles on the season, so you know he's a run supporter, but he's still a pass defender first. He has to take away that deep ball. Dan Conroy for the extra point. Hasn't missed one of these all season long. Knocks it through. 
Kevin Mumo will kick this one off once again from the 30 yard line. Kicks in the direction of McBurse. Once again picks it up right at the goal line. And this time McBurse cannot make it out to the 20. He's tackled at the 16 yard line. Return of 17 yards for McBurse. And Purdue will begin again on offense. It's important for Purdue to come out and get something going. Get established. Whether it's handing the football off, trying to establish the run game, to get some comfort and confidence going offensively. Rob Henry was the starting quarterback the last time that Purdue won. He was the starting quarterback when they beat Minnesota and Northwestern, but they've since lost four in a row. Henry keeps it. That's what he does really well. And picks up four yards right up the gut, tackled by Greg Jones. Take a look at the Auto Owners Insurance starting defense for Michigan State up front. One of the sophomores that starts, Tyler Hoover, has really stepped up in recent weeks, has three sacks on the season. Linebackers, everyone talks about Greg Jones, and why not? He's been great. But Eric Gordon, also a senior, playing his last game here at Spartan Stadium. He has had a career in which he's had over 300 tackles. And in the defensive backfield, Chris L. Rucker, a senior, has had five career interceptions. This is his 40th game as a Spartan. Right up the gut, Keith Carlos! And Carlos has got a chance! He rips it across the 50! What kind of speed does he have? Carlos, touchdown! Not sure if anyone expected that. An 80-yard rip for Carlos. Well, Pat Narduzzi, defensive coordinator of Michigan State, said we have to stop the run. Great blocking up front. Gets a nice block down the field. And good job of Carlos turning on the Jets, getting to the end zone, putting a shot of adrenaline into the Boilermakers. Carson Wiggs to tack on the extra point. Keith Carlos coming into the game with 188 yards on the season and no touchdowns gets an 80 yard touchdown run right here. And that's something Michigan State's not accustomed to seeing. Why? Because their linebackers are so good. But he gets on the second level quickly. Good, again, good blocking up front. Secondary can't catch him. It's a statement by the Boilermakers that they believe they can run on this Spartan defense. Carissa mentioned before the game that Michigan State has not allowed a 100-yard rusher so far this year. Well, Keith Carlos is 80% uh, of the way there now. Yeah. <laughs> good math. He is on his way, and good blocking up front by Purdue. Michigan State had not allowed a run of over 35 yards this year. That all has gone by the wayside. Mark D'Antonio's rush defense giving up its longest play of the season. You know, it's interesting, as I mentioned, we talked to Pat Narduzzi yesterday, defensive coordinator. He said, we got to stop the run and we got to eliminate big plays. Well, you saw a two for one on that run by Carlos. Kickoff, fielded at the four-yard line. Out to the 26. On the return, Benny Fowler. Another one of those youngsters that has a whole bunch of potential uh, to be better than average at Michigan State. Redshirt freshman from Bloomfield, Michigan. There go. Players getting after it a little bit on the field on both sides. Senior day, so you know this game is going to be filled with emotion and intensity. Today's United States Marine Corps leader of the game, junior quarterback Kirk Cousins, 3.72 GPA. Kinesiology is his major, two time academic, all Big Ten. He was a kid born and raised in the Chicago suburbs that played his high school football in Holland, Michigan, and really enjoys being the starting quarterback. For the Spartans, Keyshawn Martin has been a big part of the offense so far today for Michigan State. Picks up two yards on the reverse. Two yards, but a great play 
by Ricardo Allen. And as you alluded to earlier, cornerback for Purdue, I love his game. Now, Keyshawn Martin's tough to bring down. He is the fastest receiver, if not player, on Michigan State. But watch this open field tackle. Ricardo Allen putting his face mask in the chest of Martin. Good job of getting him down in space. So Martin's already caught a couple of passes and now has run that reverse. So three touches in the first eight minutes of the game. For Martin, coming off that ankle injury. Cousins quickly gets it out. Dangerous pass caught by B.J. Cunningham. It's going to be short of the first down marker. A gain of four. Ricardo Allen with another tackle. Yeah, and that time Ricardo Allen. Watch him sit on this route. He's going to delay just a little bit. He had a chance to go get this one. And as you teach your cornerbacks, you have to believe what you see and trust your eyes. That time he got a good read on the play. Potential pick six. Kirk Cousins has thrown four interceptions in his last two games. Some of the issues rolling off of his back foot. Looked like he may have done that there, trying to hit the out rock. Third down at four. Cousins. Picked. Could be pick six. It's Ricardo Allen for the second straight week. He gets an interception for a touchdown for Purdue. Are you kidding me? This is a freshman, mind you. Confidence, swagger, belief in his ability. Jumps the quick slant. Outstanding play. Watch him just jump this route. Now, we told you about the last one. He had an opportunity to get it. He came back. He trusted his eyes. Pick six. Big time play for Purdue. Two touchdowns in the last 95 seconds for Purdue. Extra point makes it a 14-7 lead for the Boilermakers. Well, Purdue, they've only run five plays so far in the ball game, but they've already got 14 points. Low kick, fielded on a hop. Benny Fowler, his second return. And Fowler trying to get to the edge, dives out to the 28-yard line. You see Cousin trying to dial up a quick slant. But just good anticipation, good read, good awareness. And good finish. Inside help. Beautifully played. Deuces, he takes it to the house. Well, the news now for Michigan State. New quarterback, redshirt freshman from Midland, Michigan, Andrew Maxwell. Thrown just 16 passes on the year. Conservative play call, handoff, Edwin Baker. He rips off a gain of five yards. Tackle made by Dwayne Beckford. Maxwell, you know, he's unbattle tested, so they're going to probably try and continue to pound the football. Let him get into the framework of the offense comfortably before he starts to air out the football. Wants to throw. And this is complete. That's going to be a first down. Catch made by Keith Nickel. Let's go down to Carissa. Guys, right after MSU got on the board quickly, Coach Hope got up in the faces of all of his players, sending the message we can't wait for something good to happen. We have to create our own opportunities and not just think they're going to fall in our lap, or, uh, say, after an 80-yard run and a pick six they're creating. I'm also down by the locker room, and I'll keep you updated on Cousins as soon as I hear anything. Thank you, Carissa. Edwin Baker now over 1,000 yards, just the sixth sophomore. They have a goal for 1,000 yards in Michigan State history. Baker again, big run. Out across the 50, pickup of 12. Let's go to Dave Revson in the studio for Discover Game Break. Exciting for those players out there. Andrew Maxwell still the quarterback with Cousins being attended to. Another quick pass out to Keyshawn Martin, his third catch. 
And he dives forward across the 45 yard line to the 44. Why that continue, uh, continual call of the play? Because they're just going to take what the defense gives them, Eric. If the corners are going to play soft coverage, they'll go with that little pop pass. See how soft the defense is playing? They get a good block by the receiver, nickel outside. You know, it's really kind of like a long handoff. You know, you're willing to take three, four, five yards a pop. Should we expect maybe a counter to that play later on in the ball game for Michigan State? Good observation. Setting them up for double moves, of course. Something to follow throughout the course of this game. Entire defensive line for Purdue just shifting there at the last moment. Second down run. Baker going to work for us. Gets to the 41 yard line. It's going to bring up a short third down. You know, a lot of times when you get those quick screen passes, you're testing the aggressiveness of the defensive back. Is he a guy that's going to drive the route quickly? Does he play it soft and try and come up and make the play? Once you identify what type of player it is, then he knows the offensive coordinator knows when he can call for double move right. Third down and two. Two tight ends in the formation, both of them right side. Now Gant moves to the left side. Play action. Plenty of time. Looking to get it to Gant. Pass too strong. You need to imagine the punt team will have to come on now for Michigan State on this fourth and two. Go interactive and play along with every football game this season on the Big Ten Network with the Big Ten Blast game. Presented by Rotel and Velveeta. Famous queso dip. Predict plays, answer trivia, compete and chat with friends for a chance to win the ultimate tailgate package. Sign up now to play the Big Ten Blast only at BigTenNetwork.com. Eric, to me, that last play call is a bit questionable there. You need two yards. You got a relatively inexperienced quarterback to come in, and you try and take a shot down the field. Got to think with your running backs, they're very capable that they could pick up two yards. For timeout. Purdue. First charge, timeout. That was a smart timeout for Purdue. Danny Hope, he realized that they had 12 men on the field defensively. Chris Carlino, number 47, was running to the sideline trying to get uh, back off the field of play, but it was still in doubt. Danny Hope said, you know what, does not take any chances and give the Spartans an automatic first down. Yeah, good awareness on the part of Coach Hope. Chris Carlino, back up middle linebacker. Well, with that timeout, a surge of energy entering Spartan Stadium. I think a smattering of fans here have just realized that Kirk Cousins has come out of the locker room and he's back on the field of play. Eight is enough. Ready to go. But the Spartans still going to punt it away. Aaron Bates, 45 yards per punt, second in the Big Ten in that category. Wearing the green shoes today. That kick is going to sail on the fly into the end zone. It's a punt of 41 yards, but a net of just 21 after the touchback. Getting festive here at Spartan Stadium as Kirk Cousins has come back out of the locker room and he looks like he may be able to come back into this game. Spartans currently trailing Purdue by a touchdown. As we go under the three minute mark here in the first quarter, Rob Henry, the quarterback, with the keeper. I love Purdue's enthusiasm. You, you see, obviously, a team that's been in a drought. But their play is still enthusiastically done. And I, I credit Danny Hope for keeping that excitement into his program. Now this team has fought. We've seen that last couple of weeks. A lot of injuries, but they play inspired football. Out in the flat, McBurse gets across the 25 to pick up a five yards. Let's go to Dave Revson in the studio for Discover Game Break.
steps up and gets off the field. So Purdue still with just one first down, yet they've got a 14 to 7 lead. The lefty, Cody Webster, kicks it away. And it's not a great kick at all. And it gets even worse for Purdue as it takes a Michigan State roll close to the 50 yard line. Just a 25 yard punt for Cody Webster. Well, coming up today at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, it's an encore presentation of our latest Big Ten icon at number 11, Mark Spitz. Before dominating the 72 Olympics in Munich, he was first a national power as an Indiana Hoosier. Swimming in Warrior Pool. Big Ten icons hosted by Keith Jackson and presented by Discover today at 4 p.m. Eastern only on the Big Ten Network. Now Kirk Cousins missed that last series, replaced by Andrew Maxwell. He is back on the field now. Remember, he's sort of holding his left arm, had nothing to do with his throwing. They hand it off. First carry of the day, Le'Veon Bell, true freshman from Columbus, Ohio, picks up three. Chris, as a defender, when a quarterback has gone back to the locker room and comes back out, do you play differently the first time you see him? No, I think it just raises your antennas up to try and bring more contact. You know, you, you think you have him somewhat rattled, so you try to get to him, maybe throw some blitzes in, give him a couple more shots. Just to play with his psyche a little bit. Under a minute to play first quarter. Ball at the 49 of Purdue. Another quick pass out in space. This time they get it to Fowler, who is absolutely stoned. Ricardo Allen, this kid has been everywhere. Well, I mean, he's been doing it both ways. Ryan Kerrigan, you know you first have to account for him. That time, offensive tackle doing a nice job. Dean slowing him down. Ryan Kerrigan's a disruptive force. He loves to make plays in the backfield. But so far, Michigan State has kept him somewhat silent. Third down and six, and we're not going to get it all. This is a third down and six. Out in space, pass is caught by Cunningham, and he's got it up for the first down. Gain of eight. Yeah, that's, that's a good play call. That time Michigan State caught for doing man-to-man coverage, so it's hard to cover out routes, but it all starts with blocking Brian Kerrigan. That time he started to bend the corner. Cousins doing a nice job of firing it, getting rid of it. Again, that's a tough play for the corner to make. Good job by Cunningham. Cunningham on pace to be the all-time catch leader at Michigan State by the time he finishes. Just a junior from Columbus, Ohio. Edwin Baker, nowhere to go. Edwin Baker, though. Of maybe a yard. Let's go to Dave Repson in the studio for Discover Game Break. thrown today. Went the entire first quarter with nothing. Scott McElwee is our referee. Ball start. Offense, number 59. Remain second down. So it wasn't against Ryan Kerrigan. It goes against D.J. Young. Yeah, and, and part of that, as we had a chance to talk to D.J. Young yesterday, is that he wants to get back and anchor so that he can't allow or doesn't allow Ryan Kerrigan to get underneath his pads because he knows that's how Kerrigan loves to set up offensive tackles to get to the quarterback. DJ Young, one of 17 seniors for the Spartans playing their final home game. Pressure, screen to Caper. Good play call, and Caper gets out across the 40 to the 38. Down in the field. Chris, do you have an update on what's uh, the situation with Kirk Cousins? Yeah, well, talking to the MSU training staff, they said that he went into the locker room because of a bruised left shoulder. They just wanted to make sure it wasn't something more serious. He didn't appear to be in much pain, obviously playing, but something to keep an eye on if he falls on it wrong or takes a hit, guys. Thank you, Carissa. 
Yeah, after Kirk Cousins, you got to go to a redshirt freshman quarterback and Andrew Maxwell. Maybe a tough goal. On third down, passes low. They're going to say it's a catch to Betty Fowler, but he's short of the first down marker. It's going to bring up fourth down and one, and a decision for Mark D'Antonio. You kick a long field goal, you go for it. Looked like he echoed there, saying, go, go, go. This isn't a short one. This is actually closer to two yards, probably, than one. He looked like he was that going, hey, go for it. It's been an aggressive team play calling wise all season long. We've seen a bunch of fakes. What would be a good call here in fourth and one? Well, last time, third and two, they tried to go with a pass play, and that's why we talked about just letting the running backs pound it up the middle. Before the snap, a whistle. So the Spartans call a timeout. Both Purdue and Michigan State with two timeouts remaining here in the first half. Handoff, first down. Baker's got it. And to me, that's just smart football. I mean, both of your backs average over five yards of carry. Baker averages over six. You believe in your backs. You believe in your offensive line. Last time on third two, you didn't convert trying to pass it. Just do what you do, run it up the gut. Good play call by Don Treadwell. And it's consistent with the way that Michigan State has played all season long. They have been a very aggressive team in terms of decisions that they've made. They go for it on fourth down and they convert. Double move, pass is complete. Dell has got it inside the 20. Oh, was that pretty. That time just faking the screen action and making what we call a second level throw. Finding the receiver in between the corner and the safety. Good touch. Guy fires that to the back shoulder. Good job. Again, work second level. There he is. Sit down in between the safety. Link can't get there in time. Good play call. Good execution. Mark Dell missed the second half of the Spartans' last game against Minnesota, showing that he is healthy now. Baker has got a chance to the corner. Touchdown, Michigan State. They keep possession and now a 19 yard touchdown for Baker. And Eric, the one thing you know about Baker is 5'9. He's got a low center of gravity and he's very rarely tackled by the first defender. That time just determined, running with a purpose. Big play for Michigan State. Dan Conroy. Misses it. First miss of an extra point on the year for Conroy. He had made his first 38. So the Boilermakers still on top by one. These are the ones you just got to have. You got to have it. See it traveling towards that upright. There it is. Nice look. Leaving points on the field. No coach D'Antonio can't be happy about that. Conroy's been close to automatic in anything he does. 14 for 15 on field goals. Had been 38 for 38 on extra points. This time it's the right upright. And the Spartans still trailing. And it's one of those plays there, too, that it doesn't catch up to you until it catches up to you. You, know, you just hope that they can battle back. That's not a, a deal breaker. Shows you the importance of special teams. That touchdown for Mark D'Antonio's club was set up by a 24-yard punt by Purdue's Cody Webster. Yeah, counter. Look at the guys get out front. Again, you have to get Baker wrapped up. He has strong legs, and he's good at running through contact. T.J. Barbarette starts from the five. And he dives out to the 25-yard line. 
turn of 21. Today's Verizon text to vote question is who's the Big Ten's best defensive player? Adrian Claiborne, Greg Jones, Ryan Kerrigan, or JJ Watt of Wisconsin? Text your vote to 202 84. Text one for Claiborne, two for Jones, three for Kerrigan, and four for Watt. We'll announce the results in the third quarter. Message and data rates may apply. Text stop to quit. It's like taking one of those multiple choice tests back in the day where you have three answers that are correct. You got to find like the best or most correct answer. That's a tough one. Numbers favor Ryan Kerrigan. If you're a numbers believer. On Henry hands it off. Keith Carlos already an 80 yard touchdown run. Picks up four yards. Tackled by Greg Jones. Greg Jones does not have numbers on his side this year. A year ago when he just put up Herculean numbers. Not so much this year. Talk to defensive coordinator Pat Narduzzi. He says he's playing just as well, if not better, than a year ago. Yeah, and the reason is it's a function of all the other players stepping their game up. So he doesn't have to make every single play unlike a year ago. Second and six, option, right side. Carlos looking for the edge. Burst through a little bit of a crease, and it's going to bring up a third down and short. Let's go to Dave Revson in the studio for Discover Game Break. your thoughts on playing a, a conference game away from your home state with Indiana moving a home game all the way to Landover? I'm a big fan of it. Outside of the obvious economic reasons for doing it, I think there's some marketing and branding opportunities. It's going to be a first down run. Carlos gets out of bounds across the 45. Had been a third and two. He picks up a good gain. It's going to be a gain of 11. Carlos has been fairly quiet over the last couple of weeks. Not so much here in this first half. He's getting close to 100 yards on the day. He's got 99. Took a shot there on the sideline. This is going to be a physical ball game. He appears to be a little woozy on the sideline. But par for the course of Purdue this year. If you're a back or receiver and you have any kind of success, you're probably going to get hurt. They've just been killed with injuries. Henry has a man wide open. It's Edison. Can't hang on. And Tavian Edison had about four steps on the closest defender. There are two things that Edison did incorrectly on this play. One is the one you see he drops the pass, but the more subtle thing is that he throttled down in his route. And when you're running that fade, you have to keep going. If he does, he continues to run that ball, hits him in stride. But because he slows down, now he takes what's a very pedestrian catch and makes it much more difficult. Second and 10, Dan Durkin back into the game. We're number 25. That's the tailback. Late handoff to Durkin. Nowhere to go. Chris Norman. Tyler Hoover combining on the stop. It'll bring up third down and 10. Tyler Hoover's really made some splash plays as a defensive end. If number one, you look at him, you love his measurables. He's 6'7, 260. And really, he has that link that you look for in defensive ends to set the point. You can hear this crowd really getting into this ball game, getting to their feet. to get off the field. Rob Henry calls timeout. Full house backfield. Trying to set up a middle screen. Get it to the tight end. Adams has it. There's a flag down on the field. It's a gain of 14 if it holds up. Time trying to get it and, and completing it to Adams on a two deep beater. Running the tight end up the seam in between the safeties. Oh, that's just a killer for Purdue. Illegal formation. Five men in the backfield. Number seven is the first man. Five yard penalty. We play a third down. Cortez Smith wasn't on the line of scrimmage, and this is going to negate this nice catch by Kyle Adams, the tight end. Yeah, mental error, but talked about again what Purdue wanted to do, sneak that tight end right up the seam. It's how you attack the cavity 
You can see it right now. Look at those safeties. So where you want to attack is right here. Nice job on that last play. First Purdue penalty comes at an inopportune time. Brings up a third and 15. And a flag is down. Before the ball is snapped, there's a flag down deep in the secondary of Michigan State. Before the snap, the lay of game, offense. There is no play. Five yard penalty. Remains third down. Rollermaker's going the wrong way. Yeah, all of a sudden this thing has gotten a little sloppy. And this is game management, clock management. Henry, no real sense of urgency to get the playoff. That falls on 1-5. He's got to be a better field general. Rollermaker's dead last in the Big Ten in this category. Some long odds here. Third and 20. Complete. Edison, nowhere to go. Bottle up. Remember a big play on this drive, Chris. Edison had been open down the right sideline. Would have been a big gainer. And he wasn't able to hang on to a pass that was fairly well thrown. No Catch the ball. Yeah. And you got to make plays when your number's called. Edison having a chance to make a big time play. The last play was just kind of living to see another day. But you better watch this guy who's back deep because he can change the game quickly. Webster just a 24-yard punt his last time. This one has a little bit more oomph to it, but it goes out of bounds at about the 25-yard line. So if you're just joining us, this is what you missed. Michigan State, first time with the ball, quick touchdown to Mark Dell. But then the Boilermakers got it back, 80-yard run by Keith Carlos, and then tacking on seven more. Interception for a touchdown for Ricardo Allen and Edwin Baker. 19-yard touchdown scamper. We thought we'd have a tie game, but Dan Conroy misses the extra point. And Michigan State trailing Purdue by one, 14 to 13, but they've got the ball. Seven minutes to play here in the first half. Edwin Baker again gets the edge, and Baker still on his feet. I'm close to the 50. Baker's come alive over the last couple of drives. 21 yards for the sophomore. Uh, interestingly enough, they run this football right in Kerrigan. That time they put a tight end over to double team. And good job, good feel as a runner and vision by Baker that time. He can take the corner if you'll give it to him. He has that second gear speed. Baker closing in on a 100-yard day. Malone back to tight end formation for the Spartans. Fake tool, play action, wide open. Catch is made by Dell. Oh, yeah, along with today's Case IH alumni spotlight features Dixon Edwards. Michigan State honoring Captain Tay, who's a linebacker for the Spartans between 87 and 90. His senior year, second team, all Big Ten. Went on to be a second round draft choice to the Cowboys and won three championships. With the Cowboys back in the 90s. And uh, here at the stadium today on a senior day. Walking across the field, beginning of the game, hand in hand. Yeah, walking with Kirk Cousins. First down carry. This time Baker is swarmed after a gain of three. I say that Baker plays with a chip on his shoulder. I, I, Heard it, read it, he runs angry. <laughs> That's what you want. A violent runner who's downhill, takes the personality of their offense and the personality of this team. Physical, tough, running right at you. That's a pretty good company. Look what he did last time against Minnesota. First Spartan. He had those numbers since uh, a Duckett. Tico and TJ Duckett, some of the best runners in the history of Michigan State. Whenever you're talking with them, you're doing good things. That's a loss of eight, Chris. What's this all about? That time, Cousins, you saw him look away at the last second. Takes his eye off the ball. Puts it on the ground. Let me see his head at the last second. He sort of takes a peek to the right. Probably trying to pick up a blitz. Got to hang in there. Well, it's third and 15. 
pressure, and down goes Cousins. Ryan Kerrigan. He's done that quite a bit. His 12th sack of the season. He's now got 12 and a half officially. Punt team comes on. Aaron Bates averaging 45 yards per boot. Sails this one inside the 10. Josh Johnson on the return brings it out to the 15. And that's where Purdue will start on offense with 4.07 to play here in the first half. Kirk Cousins on the bench for Michigan State. They trail by a point. Purdue has the football. First and 10 ball to 15. Henry, the quarterback with the keeper. He has tackled Kevin Pickleman and Trent Robinson combined on the tackle. A gain of four. Just a reminder, stay tuned for the Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report. Dave, Jerry, Howard, and Glenn will be along from our Chicago studios. The scores and highlights. Only team around the Big Ten that is off this week with the bye. Minnesota. Everyone else in action. Northwestern and Illinois playing at Ruby Field at Chicago's north side. For the snap, we've got a whistle and another timeout is called by Purdue. That's their That's third. third. The final timeout of the first half. I don't believe the play clock is winding down there. I think that may have just been a formation issue. Well, while we have a moment, let's tell you about uh, the latest Big Ten icon. On Tuesday night, number 10, Isaiah Thomas will be unveiled. Hear the great story about the former Indiana guard that led the Hoosiers to the 1981 national title. It's an all-new Big Ten icons hosted by Keith Jackson, an icon himself. Presented by Discover Tuesday, 9 p.m. Eastern, only on the Big Ten Network. And boy, was he one of my absolute favorites growing up. Rush to the court for 10, I was Isaiah Thomas. Really? Yeah. Until my J was off, I had no handles. <laughs> Quickly figured out I wasn't. And I picked up the football again. Yeah, Rob Henry from Ocala, Florida. He originally was the backup to Robert Marv, but Marv going out with that knee injury against Toledo. Henry played very well in wins over Minnesota and Northwestern, but then injured a finger against Ohio State. Not playing with a glove, protecting it. Passing sometimes an issue because of that lacerated index finger. Second down and six. Henry trying to get to the edge. There's a flag down as Henry is pushed out of bounds close to the 20 yard line. Another flag coming out late as well. For a guy who's got an injured finger, kind of odd that he's using that hand for the stiff arm, but it's going to be a penalty against Michigan State. Well, it's offsetting penalties, looks to be. And the first flag dropped in an area that you would think it would be holding against Purdue, and then a lot of action going on on the sideline. Michigan State corners coming in late to tackle Henry. And the preliminary call was a hold. Here it is. Hold. Oh. Offense. Oh. Number 48. That penalty will be administered after the distance to the goal. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Defense, number two, number five, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. So it's a hold on Jared Crank of Purdue, but then a personal foul on Johnny Adams. Well, yeah, and that's just awareness, knowing where you're at on the football field. He's got a feel that he's approaching the sideline. He's one, two yards out of bounds when he's initiating contact. Got to play smart and with field awareness. So it's a bit of a yo-yo there in terms of marking the ball, but when it's all said and done, it's going to be first down and 10 with the ball located on the 24-yard line. We think side judges kind of come in right now. I think that uh, there may be still some conversation about this.
officials huddling make sure that they get it all accurately and all correct. Well, there was a request for the ball to be placed on the left hash. The ball will be snapped in the previous spot for real. Okay. Before we get the snap, let's go down to Carissa. Carissa, what's the latest on uh, Michigan State's quarterback? Yeah, well, good news for MSU fans. Kirk Cousins walking around the sidelines trying to test out that right leg, showing trainers that he fell on it awkwardly, kind of looking at his knee. Had a little bit of a limp, but he's got his helmet back on, taking some snaps right now, and uh, definitely no keeping him out of this game, guys. Thank you, Carissa. That's going to be a big deal for the Spartans in a must-win situation. Wrap around handoff, Keith Carlos back into the game, tackled by Kevin Pickleman at the line of scrimmage. Ball security, cover up the football. So far today, running backs have been doing just that, not putting it on the ground. But if you're Michigan State, you got to be thinking strip, try to create a turnover. Carlos still stuck with 99 yards. Biggest scanner was an 80 yard touchdown back in the first quarter. Henry, quick hitter, complete. Edison catches this one. It's going to be a gain of about eight. Bring up third down and short. Now, something Purdue has done a lot better this week than they did a week ago is hold on to the football. They had five turnovers in their game last week against Michigan. Yeah, this is a decisive play, though. Good job of Edison working in the void of the defense. Third and two manageable for Purdue. See if they can come out and move the sticks. Edison in motion. They give it to him. Speed sweep. Edison's got the first down. That's just the fourth Purdue first down. They will stay on the field under two minutes to play here in the first half. And again, bit de deception. Sort of play with the eyes of the defenders of Michigan State. It's a quick end around. Zone coverage. Knowing where you got to get and executing the offense. Good job by Purdue. Clock stop, 150 to play. Play action. Henry has Durkin. Did he hold on? Yes, he did. Nice catch. By Dan Durkin, the senior from Wheaton, Illinois, a gain of 23. Nice catch and nice play call by Gary Norman. That time you got Durkin out of the backfield, running a wheel route, working against Chris Norman. Gets to the point. Good ball placement. Excellent catch by Durkin. And now Michigan State calls a timeout. Maybe this is a regrouping timeout. Maybe they just want to let the guys upstairs take a longer look just to make sure that indeed what. Think there's anything there, right? Now Michigan State sort of at the precipice here, at least in this half. First down, Purdue generating some momentum. Boilermakers split the tight end. Kyle Adams out wide right, and they want to run the football. The quarterback Henry protects it and rumbles across the 35 to the 34 for a gain of five. Clock continuing to move. Purdue does not have a timeout. Another quick hitter. This time complete. McBurse has the first down to the 25. Gain of nine. Clock will stop temporarily. I'm 
for Purdue. They need to win today and win next week against Indiana to become bowl eligible. They've lost four in a row. Lots of incentive again. Cornerbacks playing a little soft. Under a minute to play. Henry keeps it. Gets out of bounds. That'll stop the clock. Gain of one. A little difference in the game. A missed extra point in the second quarter by Dan Conroy. Yeah, and just oftentimes little things can become big things. As you said earlier, he's been automatic this season. Probably wishes he had that one back. That did 38 for 38 in extra points. Remember, a big part of this drive back early on. A personal foul call against Johnny Adams of Michigan State. Henry incomplete. Edison can't hang on. Henry sort of motioned to Addison, hey, my bad on that one. That time, Purdue's offensive line gave Henry time to set his feet, no rush and make a comfortable throw and put that ball in the numbers. He doesn't do that. Level of difficulty changes on the catch and results in incompletion. 11th play of this drive. They've already picked up 61 yards. Quick hitter. First down, Gary Bush inside the 10. Now Tariq McBurst picks up 17 yards. Well, again, we talked about this identifying matchups. You got a soft corner. Take that quick throw or quick hitter, as you say. Positive yardage. And now they're just going to burn it down with a quick spike. And it'll be second down and goal. They don't have any timeouts. Do you agree with wasting a play with a spike? Well, they had to do that just to get it going. But on that last play, Eric, here's the, the cornerback there's got to go attack it much sooner. Because if they keep seeing that, they're going to quick keep hitting that quick pop. So you think that with 36 seconds remaining in the first half, they didn't have enough time to get off three plays with the calling a play at the line? I think the quarterback was managing the situation there, and he just he did what was best for their offense on that play. So it's second down and goal after the spike. Durkin back into the game, they get it to him. And Durkin is tackled. Purdue cannot stop the clock. It was Colin Neely on the tackle. Third down and goal. Because keep in mind, Eric, it's so important to have your quarterback not thinking so much. So you want him to make a decision and go with it. And now it's timeout. Michigan State that calls the timeout. The third and final five timeout. Get some help there. So both teams have used all three of their timeouts here in this first half. Text keyword Rotel to 20284 to enter the Rotel. Feed their game face sweepstakes. The winner will receive 52 weeks worth of groceries and a trip to a college football game. Message and data rates may apply. Text stop to quit. Michigan State needing to win today to stay atop the Big Ten standings, along with Ohio State and Wisconsin. If Michigan State wins today and wins next week at Penn State, they'll be assured of at least a share of the Big Ten title. Basically, what they are really hoping for is to win out. And then if Ohio State loses either this week against Iowa or next week against Michigan, Michigan State, they own the tiebreaker over Wisconsin because of their head-to-head -head win. That would send Mark Dan and D'Antonio's team out to the Rose Bowl. Well, if they're going to do that, they got to cut down on big mistakes. Interception return for a TD. Missed PAT. Late hit. Those things have to be correct. Third and goal. Henry. Design rollout. Has a man caught. Touchdown, Edison. What a drive for Purdue. They go 85 yards, and they put a touchdown on the board. Just great job up front. Start with that. Roll out here, Henry. 
Anytime you get that crossing route, it takes time. Offensive lineman give it to him. Good execution. Edison finding the marker. Beautiful football by Purdue. And a masterful drive. Extra point by Wiggs is good. And you know, Danny Hope told us that there's a difference between being tense and intense. This team is not afraid of the moment. They're playing loose, relaxed, and making plays. A little low skimmer picked up by one of the upbacks. And return to the 34, almost a fumble on that return. That was uh, the fullback, Nick Benzuk, on the return. One of the 17 seniors for Michigan State. Job of link that time, putting his hat right on the oh. football as you're taught to do. Two seconds Our left. What's uh, the play call here for Michigan State? Oh, sure, they play it close to their vest. That's just going to be a kneel down for Kirk Cousins. And that'll do it. 30 minutes in the books. Michigan State, they're trailing, visiting Purdue by eight. This is a Purdue team, Eric, that's come out and played. I mean, their fists are balled up. They're fighting on both sides of the ball and making great plays. Let's go down to Carissa, who's with Danny Hope. Well, Coach, you have to be thrilled with the way that your team's played in this first half, but you know defensive coordinator Pat Narduzzi will make adjustments. What is your message to your team? We're going to go inside and, and uh, talk to our team about playing hard in the second half. We have to come out in the second half and play harder than Michigan State. We're going to start off with that, and we have to be the aggressor. We're not going to sit back on our heels because we're ahead. Edwin Baker's got some momentum on the ground. They're getting that running game going. How do you slow that down? we got to do better across the line of scrimmage. we got to knock their offensive linemen back some. I think we haven't played near as physical yet as a defense as we can. We appreciate it. Thanks, Coach. Uh, thank you. Guys. Start of the second half is brought to you by Kay Jewelers. From the nine-yard line, Keyshawn Martin. Drives the left side and he's tripped up. Good special teams tackle. It'll be Michigan State ball at the 23 yard line. Big plays are infectious. Offense, defense, you see it on special teams. And right now, this Purdue team, do they have the true belief that they can get it done here in Spartan Stadium? This is what it looked like for Michigan State. Six first half possessions. Had a kneel down at the half, two touchdowns, a couple of punts, and a turnover. It was a pick six thrown by Kirk Cousins. They start with Edwin Baker on the ground, and he is wrapped up in the line of scrimmage. Ryan Kerrigan, the first man to get his thumbs on him. And Kerrigan just ran unabated to the running back. Nobody picked him up at all. You know that he's a player that he likes the snap anticipation. He's just going to come off the edge here and bend the corner. And he loves to anticipate the snap. You're not going to be able to get a pulling lineman to him because he's way too quick and he has way too much burst off the edge. Another negative play, so it's another tackle for a loss for the senior from Muncie, Indiana. Second and 11, Cousins over the middle has his tight end. Out to the 30-yard line, catch is made by Charlie Gant. It'll be a pickup of eight. Kerrigan's starting to affect this game. Watch him come off the corner again. Now we know he likes to get underneath the lineman. He bends the corner. Now Cousins has to get rid of the football quicker. You don't always have to get a sack on a quarterback to affect the play. Cousins sometimes gets rid of it sooner than he wants to, and it's because of number 94. Had a sack in the first half, now leads the Big Ten with 12 and a half quarterback sacks on the year. And I think maybe causing a penalty there. Jay Michael Dean had Lost Kerrigan ball. in front of him. Offense, number 77. Five yard penalty. Makes third down. And Dean got antsy with 94 across from him. Because he's worried about that first step. He wants to get outside and be able to anchor down and defend or block Kerrigan. But sometimes just Kerrigan's presence on the field. He gets those offensive linemen awfully nervous about one-on-one -on -one blocks. Larry Caper into the game in the backfield next to Cousins. Man in motion, B.J. Cunningham, third and eight. Nickel with the catch. 
tackle made in space by Ricardo Allen. You're just in love with Ricardo Allen. I, I'm in love with two guys. <laughs> Kerrigan, watch how he bends the corner. Gets Smalls, keeps fighting, affects the throw. Cousins has to get rid of it. And as you say, Ricardo Allen once again making big plays when his number's called. Third down, money down. Purdue once again gets off the field. Excellent series by the Boilermakers. On Aaron Bates. Good kick at the wind that is back and drives Josh Johnson down to the 17. Johnson spins out of a couple tackles. Still on his feet. And Johnson. Out to the 32-yard line. It was a return of 15 yards, but it took about 15 seconds. Well, yeah, and you wonder if this is indicative of Purdue's effort and their desire to want this game more. Look at this individual effort refusing to be denied. Johnson, good job of getting additional yardage. Finally tackled by Chris L. Walker. This is what Purdue did in their five first-half possessions. Really all or nothing. Two touchdowns, three punts. Design quarterback draw. Henry bumps it out to the outside. Henry still on his feet, has the edge. Out to the 45-yard line. That's what he can bring to your team. And it shows me that the coaches have 100% confidence in that index finger because they keep calling these design draw plays. Here, watch him sniff out the run lane. Finds it. He's athletic enough, one of the best athletes on the team, to get the edge, get outside of the cornerback, Johnny Adams. Purdue continuing to get chunks of yardage on the ground. And off Durkin. Good lead on first down for the senior, tackled by Eric Gordon. Big Ten football is brought to you in high definition by Phillips Televisions. Purdue needing to win not only today, but also to win next week against Indiana to become bowl eligible. Well, this is a team that's much better than their record showed. And even though they've hit a period of stagnation, they played enthusiastically, they believe they can win, and they have the right football demeanor to go out and get it done. Second down, Henry shoots it. Edison with the catch. First down, Boilermaker. This is a Purdue team that is playing without Marv, Justin Siller, Keith Smart, Ralph Bolden, and they're still getting it done. You talk about being a step away that time. Garrett Gordon tries to slip underneath this pass. You're going to see him flash across the screen. He gets there a hair late. Good concentration by Edison. in the game and the quarterback keeps it. Henry fools no one. Tackled behind the line of scrimmage. Tyler Hoover and Jarrell Worthy at the tackle for loss. Loss of one. Now time for the MFS quarterback comparison. MFS creating innovative investments since 1924. Efficient with the football. Both of these guys smart quarterbacks. See the pick six so by Cousins. That's been a tremendous difference in this ball game. Rob Henry being quite judicious with the football. Cousins is only in completion of the first half. Was the interception. Right side at the line of scrimmage. Hard tackle made by Mitchell White. Nickelback comes on and makes the stop after a gain of one. As my old coach would tell me, slip on your own time. Don't slip on mine. Edison can't keep his footing. Now all of a sudden, the crescendo in this stadium. Michigan State, money down. Can they get off the field? Play clock down to six. Now they're going to have nearly enough time. Purdue has to burn their first and second half timeout. To stay on the field. Line to get is the 35. Henry with time. Has it complete the tight end Adams? Did he get enough? It's going to depend on the spot. He does have enough. It's going to be a first down for the Boilermakers. Adams is like the security blanket. Henry 
gets under duress or he has to have a go to guy. Big target. Now watch how he turns up the field. Oh nice pretty. We see the orange mark right there. Look at that effort. And again it's Purdue's players pushing past themselves to make big plays. They're actually going to bring the chains all the way across the field just to make this uh, formal that this was enough for a first down. And it is. All right, Chris, I have to ask you. At one point, Danny Hope's team was trailing in terms of combined first downs 13 to 12 to Michigan State. The Boilermakers are sorry, sorry, 13 to 2 in first downs since they have had the last eight first downs to Michigan State's none. What are they doing offensively that has allowed them to, uh, to pick things up? Two things. First off, they've been able to get that running game going, which has gotten Michigan State back on its heels a little bit. And then they put Henry in a position to make high percentage throws based off of that rollout action. And he has had a hot arm. Edison in motion. They give it to him. Edison has the corner. And then knocked out of bounds after a gain of three. Trent Robinson, junior from Bay City, on the push out will bring up the second down. The other thing Purdue has done masterfully is that they've mixed it up just a little here and there with a little, you know, misdirection, reverse action. So it's not that they're throwing a number of different plays at Michigan State, but they're calling the right plays at the right time. Right now, they're on the outskirts of field goal range. Carson Wiggs has got a big leg. We've seen that. Pitch out, Durkin. Good play call. Durkin has the first down for Purdue. Eric Gordon on the tackle, but a gain of 10. Well, we've covered Purdue enough to see this play. It's the old flip 90, as they call it. Durkin getting outside. Eric, they love to have that in their saddlebag. Watch him just flip it over. Good job. Durkin runs with toughness. Now quickly back to the line of scrimmage, delayed handoff to Durkin. Tackled by that man again, number 53, Greg Jones with the stop. Let's take a look at today's rising key connection. It's uh, Michigan State head coach Mark D'Antonio. At one point, he was on the staff at Purdue. 1981, he was on Jim Young's staff. They finished below 500 at 5 and 6. D'Antonio is the one who was spotlighted, spotlit in that shot we had we talked to him about it he said as a graduate assistant he made four hundred and thirty six dollars mm. per month mm. my response I'm like I bet that weeded out a lot of people got a nice chuckle out of that yes it did got to do what it takes Design quarterback run Henry again gets to the perimeter and Henry pushed out of bounds inside the 10 they're doing just enough to keep the Spartans on their heels. And Eric, the key word that you used is perimeter. And when you run that option attack, the emphasis is on getting the ball outside. And that's why if you have an athletic quarterback like Henry, he has a skill set to get that ball outside. Michigan State's defense has to keep him boxed in. But right now, Purdue sustaining a long methodical drop. With Chris Martin and Chris Thompson, I'm Eric Collins. Purdue, they've lost four in a row. They've got the lead and the ball inside the 10 against Michigan State. Flags fly. Left guard Justin Pierce, fifth year senior from Tom Dean, Texas. Call for the false start. That'll move him back on the other side of the 10. We just looked at the record of Purdue, though. They do not look like a team that's lost its last four games. I mean, they've come in confident, borderline cocky, but playing within themselves and taking every inch of this field that Michigan State's given. Purdue needs a win today and a win next week against Indiana to become bowl eligible to the end zone. Caught! Touchdown! Cortez Smith! Hey, I know it's senior day here in East Lansing. But I will tell you, it looks like Purdue just wants this game a little more. Back shoulder fade. Good job. Isolated coverage. One on one. Well played by the receiver. 
Lead is 14, trying to make it 15 with the extra point. Carson Wiggs, no problem. And they have to get that run game going. Again, remember that the only loss State has against Iowa, and that was when they weren't a balanced offensive attack, and they, and they couldn't get the offensive backs going. Short kick into the win. Keyshawn Martin starts in the sixth. Martin trying to give his team a spark. Can't do it. Tackle before he makes it to the 20. Chris, Michigan State scored the first points of the game. They had a touchdown the first time they had it. It looked as if Purdue was on the ropes early. Not a lot to look forward to, a four-game losing streak. But Purdue has just played magnificently. They have, and we're going to see if Cousins now can get his arms around his guys and get them going in the right direction. He's got to be the consummate leader of the Spartans to get this offensive attack going. Haven't had a first down since the first quarter. Play action. Cousins. Wide open man. This is Dell. Defender slips down and Dell goes down, but not before he gets out to the 43-yard line. A pitch and catch of 26 yards. Well, that's a way to get going. Cousins finds Dell, motions him down. He gets in the slot. Defensive backs just busted assignment. Allows him to get wide open. Good job of Cousins recognizing that and putting the ball on the numbers. That's the longest play of the ball game so far today for Michigan State, a gain of 23. Cousins gets it off quickly again, finds his best guy, Dell, who is driven back at about the 49-yard line in seven. Dell has been the most productive wide receiver and really probably the most polished of all the wide receivers in terms of his route running ability, good detail, and nice soft hands to fluff the football. So you can expect that Kirk Cousins will continue to dial his number. Dell came into this ball game 11th all time in catches for Michigan State. Cousins 16 for 17 throwing the football now. Wants to throw it again. Make it 17 for 18. Nickel has the ball. First down and then so inside the 40. So Holland on the tackle. Now football fans, you can create your own football highlight reels each week with the Big Ten football mashup. Presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. Go to mashup.big10network.com right now to compile your favorite plays and share them with your friends. Cousins managing the pace of this game. Baker the tailback. They fake it to him. Looking for the big play. Incomplete throw short of Benny Fowler. Two freshmen, Roberto Allen on the defense. Well, Allen has brought his blanket with him today because he's just going to watch the recovery speed. Fowler gets on top, but now watch him close. And then he gets position inside. It's outstanding coverage. It's exactly what you teach. He plays the ball in and just erases the receiver. D'Antonio had seen his quarterback, Kirk Cousins, complete 11 straight passes. Before that one's broken up by Allen. Baker, Clark on a scrimmage. Joe Holland, Jr. from Indianapolis with the tackle. Now they have Michigan State behind the chains once again. Third and long. Keep in mind that Throughout the course of the season, neither one of these teams have been great on third downs. So this is a bit of a harrowing position for Michigan State. See if they can convert. And look out for number 94 in white, Ryan Kerrigan, on this obvious passing down. Well, what do you do for that? You put a tight end over him also to help out. Third and nine. Plenty of time for Cousins. Pass too long looking for Fowler. Fowler had a step. But the Spartans just can't get it to him. So it's going to bring up fourth down and a decision for Mark D'Antonio. Cousins has looked a little gimpy on the last couple of plays. But where do you, you find 94? Well, you find him with a bunch of green jerseys on him. 
literally a triple team to slow down that pass rush and give Cousins more time. Punt formation. Remember, Aaron Bates can throw the football. We've seen that this year a couple of times. This time he punts it away. He bounces inside the 10 and will be down at the 1. They've got the ball first down at 10, but in the shadow of their own goal line. Rob Henry under center. Hand off Durkin. Very conservative play call. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. You have to watch that play call when you got a running back that's lining up so deep in the end zone. Opens up the possibility of safety, but good job of getting a few yards inside. Chris, it was last week against Michigan where Purdue turned the football over five times. They haven't turned the football over today. That's one of the reasons why they've got a lead. They can't afford to turn it over here. Play clock down to one. They don't get it off, but really, what's the, what's the big deal? It's going to lose them maybe six inches. Yeah, but it's so interesting to watch the Time defense. Out. The timeout was called before the delay game. There is no foul for the delay game. That's Purdue's first timeout of the second half. Wow, look at Danny Hope. He's saying we didn't call that timeout. You wouldn't want to call a timeout when the ball's on the one and a half yard line and it's going to be a half the distance to the goal penalty. At all. It'd be absolutely senseless. So the timeout actually saves a yard. That's, someone did. Antavian Edison calls the timeout. Mm. Doesn't look like he was instructed to from the sideline. At least the look on Danny Hope's face. And it wasn't even his quarterback that called it. Equally stunning. They want to throw it. And they want a bunch. They have a man. It's caught. Cortez Smith. Smith caught from behind, but it's a huge gainer for Purdue. He beats Trenton Robinson. It's a gain of 70. Just what you're trying to do, get him in a trail position. He just runs right past Johnny Adams. It's officially going to be a 67-yard gain. First down carry. That's the fullback, Jared Frank. Nothing doing. Let's go down to the field. Carissa, what's the latest down there on the sidelines? Well, you know, we've seen this Purdue team the last couple of weeks, and Coach Hope's message is always very simple. Have fun. Right before this series started, he said, now we control the game. Now it's ours. We get to set the tone. And obviously a fired up group over here. And Chris, to pay off your point about Cousins, he has been limping on the sidelines, really favoring that right knee. Again, that shot he took in the second quarter. And it's very cold out here. He's trying to keep it loose. Thank you, Carissa. Second down at 12 after that loss. Jonathan Strayhorn with the tackle. Let's go to Dave Revson in the studio for Discover Game Break. Thank you, Dave. Well, I get Rever with a little Spanish there. <laughs> Indiana Hoosiers will play Purdue next week at Ross Age Stadium in West Lafayette. Third down and long. Third and 13. And there's a whistle flag. That's going to be on the quarterback, Rob Henry. Stepped out from the center too quickly. Start. 15 offense. Five yard penalty. Remains third down. All right, Chris, what are some options here? It's third and 18. The likelihood of getting a first down at the 21 is not great for Purdue. Right, and that's when you got to talk managing the game. Be smart with the football. You know, last time in this situation, we've seen him look for Kyle Adams. Safety blanket tight end. Where would be a good yard line to get to to set up a field goal for Carson Wiggs? 
Well, he's got to get probably another 10 yards or so to comfortably be able to do that. Third and 18, Henry. Incomplete. He was looking for Edison because they don't get a thing. They're going to have to punt the football away. That's good defense, too, by Michigan State. You know where Purdue's had success is on their rollout pass. Here's just another rollout zone defense. Know where the sticks are, protect the sticks, and come up and make the play. And now they need Keyshawn Martin here to put his fingerprints on this game and see if he can get a big return going. The directional punter, Carson Wiggs, will kick it. End over end, fair catch called for and made by Keyshawn Martin. And one thing at least Purdue was able to do was they changed the field position game. They wore at the one yard line and at least they're able to pin Michigan State inside the 20 here. Let's take a look at the results from today's Verizon text to vote. We asked who's the Big Ten's best defensive player. Look at that. Ryan <laughs> Kerrigan taking 40% of the vote. Greg Jones not too far behind. J.J. Watt just 8%. That's shocking. Badger mm. fans uh, mm. not using the cell phone as much as other people. <laughs> Do you agree, Ryan Kerrigan, best defensive player in the Big Ten? It'd be hard to argue against that. I would cast a vote for him, no doubt, the way he's played this season. Kirk Cousins, play action, has a man. It's been uh, Mark Dell all the time today. Dell with another catch. He now has six, gain of 15. And now he's working on Ricardo Allen. Good job off the release. Oh, good route. He snaps off at the top of that route to create some separation. And just nice ball placement by Cousins. Throwing the ball outside away from the defender. Le'Veon Bell now in the game. Didn't get much uh, playing time in the first half. He barrels forward for a gain of three, maybe four. Bruce Gaston with the tackle. Le'Veon Bell in the first half had one carry for three yards. It's a good point. And, you know, a lot of people are talking about his production sort of tapering off in most recent weeks. And we asked Don Treadwell about that. He said he's a young back. He's dealing with the mental and physical rigidity of this game. And Purdue again playing extremely well on both sides of the ball. Defense back out. Second down throw, it's complete over the middle. Keyshawn Martin with the grab, and Martin screws across the 40 for the first down. Let's go to Dave Revson in the studio for Discover Game Break. Ball starts, offense, number 83, five yard penalty, first down. Michigan State tried to get to the line of scrimmage and call a quick play, and they went too quickly. Called for a false start. That's their third false start penalty of the ball game. They call it on the tight end, Charlie Gann. And you know why? Look who he's across from. Ryan Kerrigan. Cousins gets it out to Cunningham. And Cunningham has tackled after a nominal gain. That's Ricardo Allen, the true freshman, again on the stop. Allen has played lights out football and he's come up he's tackled well coverage has been there down the field you expect Michigan State to take a few more shots look at the tempo being changed by Michigan State oh and it doesn't work off intercepted Josh Johnson did he hang on long enough he did not he had the ball then dropped it when he hit the ground oh and he knows he had it nice job look at his eyes looking back all the way he knows he has help over the top. Oh, I don't know. As they do every play in college football, they look at the replay. And some they look at for longer than others. They're going to look for a long time at this one, you would assume. Michigan State quickly going to the line of scrimmage. Gonna stand his call. Le'Veon Bell comes out of the backfield, and he's got a first down. That could be a huge 
difference in this ballgame. Of course, we need to talk about this interception a moment ago. Blocks the football, brings it in his body, he controls it going to the ground. And to me, that's an interception. Clearly possessed the football, wasn't moving around, takes it through the ground. And you would think, I know those, those timeouts, you hold them close to your vest, but to want to get the officials to review that one might have been worth a Danny Hope. I'm just a little bit surprised that they didn't take a little longer to look at it. That would have been a big change of possession in this ball game. Now tomorrow it's a Fox NFL Sunday, one of the keynote games. The Packers taking on the Vikings. But possibly Brett Favre's final game against his old team. Plus other matchups. Coverage begins tomorrow, noon Eastern time. The Fox NFL pregame show. Check local listings for the game in your area. Again, watch him just playing cover two zone. Reads it all the way. Watch him go up, controls the football. Oof. It's too late now. Kirk Cousins throws it again up for grabs, and this one out of bounds. Looking for Keyshawn Martin. Yeah, that could keep Michigan State alive on this drive. But, you know, you're a football player, you got to buckle up your chin strap and play the next play. And that's what Purdue is doing. I've been impressed with the play on the back end. Of course, the defensive back's best friend is a good pass rush. Purdue has shown that. Four receivers in the game. Le'Veon Bell is the back. Trying to get it to Martin. Reviewed that play quite a bit, and it's incomplete. It'll bring up third down and ten. Let's take a look at our Chex Mix fan cam. Chex Mix on game day. We're made to mix. A, somewhat of a quiet crowd, and it's not just because fans are wearing mittens. They've been quiet because for the majority of this game, Purdue has been leading in this game against the heavily favored Michigan State Spartans. Well, yeah, and even in the cold, Purdue's been on fire. So they will look to keep that up defensively again here on third down. See if they can bring their offense back out. Cousins, plenty of time. Over the middle, it's complete, but for a short game. It's Mark Dell with the grab, a gain of two. It's going to bring up fourth down and eight. Now, I just don't get that. I mean, as you say, he had plenty of time and essentially just went with a check down option. I mean, this is a. It's a shallow crosser. He's going to actually work back towards the quarterback, so he's losing depth and ground. Don't like that decision making. The punter, Aaron Bates, takes it away. End over end. Fair catch called for and made by Josh Johnson inside the five. It's going to be terrible field position for Purdue. Second state, state drive that started inside the five for Purdue. Henry out of the gun, wants to throw from his own end zone. It's complete in space. Flag down on the field. This is Al Tariq McBurst. Gain of four if it holds up. Holding. Offense. Number 67. Half of this is the goal. Remains first down. Now, Purdue's fortunate that wasn't holding in the end zone. That would have been a safety. Take a look at the Rotel Velveeta combination of the game because you can't win without the perfect partner. Yeah, Henry Cortez Smith, we saw the big strike. Smith doing a good job at using his linear speed to get on top of the defensive backs. Henry's been throwing the ball well all day, and I must say, he's been passing it and throwing it with a lot greater accuracy than I anticipated. And with that lacerated index finger that has limited him for the last month. First down at 10. Henry. Uh oh, this is trouble. Intercepted. Chris L. Rucker's got the football. Michigan State, they've got the football in goal range. All for aggressive play call. But you have to make good sense. And to me, he's got time. There's no reason to go for the home run ball. Clearly a disconnect with his wide receiver. The receiver's running the wrong route. A little pressure, but he had time. 
Just not in sync with his wide receiver. He was looking for Gary Bush, but Bush wasn't within 20 yards of that football. So the ball on the 21 yard line. And around. This is Martin. And Martin gets to the 10 yard line. Body works up the field, and now I mean he's in a 3-1-3 area code somewhere near Detroit. Big opportunity for Michigan State. So the ball now at the nine-yard line. It'll be first down and goal. Edwin Baker back in the game. They give it to the sophomore, and Baker looking for room gets to the five. Deshaun Martin, that last big play. He's been dealing with an ankle injury and now he's talking with the training staff. That's the last two games with that ankle. Been heavily featured in this ball game. Out of the gun, Cousins looks to the end zone. It's tipped up in the air. Incomplete. Cunningham lost it. Keith Nickel grabbed it, but he's out of bounds. Great play. You're going to see Albert Evans comes underneath. You always want to undercut. Not even close. You always want to undercut every route in the end zone. Watch Evans come underneath this. Good timing, anticipation. Saves a touchdown. So it's third down now in goal. Before the snap of penalty. It's going to be another false start. False start. Offense, number 51. Five yard penalty. Remains third down. Tough senior day for DJ Young. That's now four false starts on the Spartans. Young's the left tackle we talked about. When those big guys go up against the speed down, rusher, like Ryan Kerrigan, they're so anxious to get back and get their feet set that a lot of times that triggers false starts. So it's his presence, even when he's not directly in the play. Five receivers in the game. Benny Fowler, the man in motion. That play was just not good from the beginning. There is a flag down on the field. Well, a lot of times, here the penalty. Talked about Kerrigan, loved to anticipate the snap. Outside. Defense, number 94. Panther listen to the goal. We play third down. Talked about how he bends the corner. Watch him. He loves to come off the edge. That time. Just can't time up the snap. So it'll bring the Spartans five yards closer. Ball at the five. Cousins to the end zone. Caught Cunningham. across the 30 and Barbarette out across the 50. Great return for Purdue. Speaking of ice cream, T.J. Barbarette, the flavor of the month right now for Purdue. Yeah, it was pretty sweet. And I'll tell you, he combined just flat-out speed with understanding of angles 
and watch him find the crease. Now he's going to get top end speed very quickly. Hits it, puts a little stutter move on the kicker. Great return, way to set up the blocks and follow the blocks. Now Purdue once again, good position here against Michigan State's defense. Purdue already up by eight. They'd love to get some more points on the board. They'd even take a field goal, you'd imagine. To go up by two scores. Man in motion, Alfred McBurse. Henry out of the gun. Hands it off to Durkin. And Durkin is stoned at the 39 by Chris Norman. Let's go to Dave Revson in the studio for Discover Game Break. First quarter. And it was a big rep, which is exactly what Purdue needed. Coming in this game, you knew they had to be able to run the football. Struggled in doing it in most recent weeks. Getting it done today. Third down and five. Durkin looking for something, doesn't find it. It's going to bring up a fourth down and five. Do you kick the field goal or do you punt it away? I think he's going to punt it away here. I don't think they're going to do either one. I think they may go for it. No, nope, now the field goal unit comes on. Carson Wiggs, who does have a big leg, will come on and attempt what will likely be a 52-yard field goal. It's a lot of trust, but he does have a lot of pop and sizzle in his leg. He's shown us that many times this season. Kick is long enough. It's good. A 52-yard bomb for Carson Wiggs, and the lead swells to 11 for Purdue. Guess that'd be worth a kiss. A lot of trust in his kicker. He goes out there not afraid of the moment. Stands in there and nails this thing. What does that do for a head coach? It gives him hope. And fire and excitement. And the job that he does, I give him all the props in the world to keep this team glued together amongst adversity, injuries, battling through and showing perseverance even th when things were at their darkest moment. Now, Chris, when people say special teams doesn't mean that much, I'm going to point to you this drive. 54-yard kickoff return, a grand total of six yards of offense, and then a 52-yard field goal. It was all special teams that drive. Yeah, and, and that's why you have to have all three phases of the game accounted for, and P Purdue has shown that today, offensively, defensively, and of course the capper has been on special teams. Eight forty-two remaining. Bell comes up, fields it at the 14. This is Keyshawn Mark, who gets out across the 30-yard line to the 31. Good to see him back in the game after a little bit of an ankle issue a moment ago. Watch Big Ten games at home or watch them on the go. Live college football and basketball games streaming right to your VCast phone only from Verizon. And if you're Purdue's defense here, you have to watch the big pops. Play conservative, but still challenge the receivers of Michigan State. But you can't give them anything cheap. Cousins with time completes it to Gant. And Gant back to the 46 yard line. And the senior from Farmington Hills playing his final game here at Spartan Stadium. The 
Michael, the man in motion. Out of the backfield. This is Baker. And Baker gets a good day. Gain on first down. Pushed out of bounds by Josh Johnson. See Purdue trying to defend the sticks. Keep everything in front of him. Not give up a home run ball. They also want to make sure they don't allow Michigan State to nickel and dime their way down the field. Michigan State trying to keep in the hunt for the Rose Bowl. Quick hitter complete to Linthicum. And he's got the first down. And if you're Purdue, you can't change your personality here. You have to continue to play with the aggression. We heard Coach Pope say it earlier. Be the aggressors. Go out and make plays. They've done it all day. Don't shy away from the big moment. Big to nickel on the end around. Cousins wants a bunch. Did he? Incomplete. Incomplete. Cunningham had it for a moment. Not long enough. If there's a better freshman cornerback out there in the country, I haven't seen it. Uh, you, you talk about lockdown. Man on in the field, right tackle, J. Michael Dean. Closing speed here. Ricardo Allen extends. He's fighting for the football. Eric, they call that rake technique. As a defensive back, you want to get in there and rake the arm of the receiver. Cunningham's looking around like he had it the whole way. The call on the field is no catch. Is there indisputable video evidence to overturn that? The fans here believe so. Again, Allen going in trying to rake this ball out. Ball's out there, so it wasn't secured for the proper amount of time, we think. Michigan State is challenging the ruling of an incomplete pass. We'll review the play. All right, this is going to be a challenge. So Michigan State wants to make sure that there's more time taken to look to see whether or not the catch was made by B.J. Cunningham or was it raked away by Ricardo Allen. Great little hand game in there with Allen. Concentration by Cunningham. A lot of sort of big moments in this game and close calls. What are they looking for right now in the booth, Chris? They're looking to see if he's possessing the football. Is it moving on the way down when he contacts the ground? Does he maintain possession of the football? Such a close call. Further review. The rolling on the field of an incomplete pass was confirmed. The ball came out when the receiver hit the ground. By rule, that's an incomplete pass. Michigan State is charged with a timeout. They have no challenges left. Chris, when the word confirmed was used, that means that there was video evidence to confirm the call on the field. It's not just one of those things where it was called on the field that way and it just stands. They believe that it confirms that the call was correct on the field. They had the looks at it. So a timeout called against Michigan State. They still have two remaining, but the challenge is denied. Second down and 10. Cousins has cut a head wide open this time. Down to the 10. Well, of course you don't succeed, try again. It's the second level throw where you get the wide receiver on a safety. That time coming back to Cunningham. He finds the cavity in the defense. Right in front of the safety. Good connection. Cousins, the 
Cunningham. Cousins to throw again. Wants Cunningham on the fade. Incomplete. Allen knocks it away. No, sir. And Allen is saying, why are you still throwing it my way? Man-to-man -man coverage, as good as it gets. One-on-one. -on -one. Me and you, who's going to make the play? Again, Allen going in, raking the ball out. Good timing, anticipation. See how he reads his keys? He's watching the receiver. The receiver's hands go up. He knows that the ball is coming. Spread out formation, five receivers in the game. Cousins looks over the middle. Touchdown! Delayed gratification for the Spartans. They finally get the score. Well, good job of Dell working this route underneath the safety, Albert Evans, able to get inside position and use that big frame to wall out the defender. So Chris here down by five points. They're not going to kick it. They're going to go for two here and try and make it a three-point deficit. Do you agree with this right now at this situation, 6.54 remaining? It's a gutsy call, but Coach D'Antonio believes in his offense. You see him put Keyshawn Martin out there. To try and get within a field goal. Cousins, quick hitter. Caught again by Dell. So Mark Dell accounts for all eight points on that possession. And the Spartans now down by just three points. T.J. Barber out with a long kickoff return a moment ago. This time it's going to be unreturnable. Ball goes through the back of the end zone. Eric, on that last touchdown, you're going to see Michigan State. Dell's going to work inside right there. Working on number 24, gets inside position underneath the safety, Evans. you got to watch those inside cuts when you get inside the red zone. Big time play. Mark Dell now with eight catches on the ball game. He has tied Plaxico Burris for eighth best all time in Spartan history. It'll be Boilermaker football, first and 10 on the 20. And in this stadium, it sounds like the perfect intersection of emotion, enthusiasm, and intensity. Take the end around. Henry has a flag down on the field. His pass is incomplete to Keith Carlos.
fired up. He always is. You know, we have a chance to meet with him. He loves to go to that board and diagram plays. Some of them call moves, some of them call chaos. It could be chaotic right now for Michigan State. in the ball game in front of Edwin Baker. Cousins gets away from Kerrigan. Ball is loose, but it doesn't make a difference. Touchdown, Michigan State. Fumble that before he got to the goal line. Should be a pretty good look here. 
After further review, the ruling of a touchdown is confirmed. Not much to do about nothing. Even if it was a fumble, it was Joel Foreman, the left guard for Michigan State, who jumped on the ball. That's now three touchdowns in the last six minutes and 23 seconds for Michigan State. Lead is three, trying to make it four. Dan Conroy with the extra point. Again, Aaron, talk about the themes, the definition of this senior class for Michigan State, the things that Coach D'Antonio told us. Perseverance, leadership, resilience shining through for the Spartan team as they battled their way back. Plenty of time on this clock. Purdue certainly had some long drives. Here's our uh, Polaris hardest working player. It's the true freshman corner, Ricardo Allen. Oh, and I'm falling in love quickly. Allen, good in run support but just absolute blanket coverage all day. He's been tested. He's made the play every single time. Playing lights out football for the Boilers. Low kick, field done on a hunt. This is T.J. Barbarette. And this time he gets out across the 30, about the 34. Bob Henry can do with that injured right finger. He's going to need to drive his team down the field. A field goal is not going to be enough. They need a touchdown to take the lead. 424 remaining. They've got one timeout to use. Yeah, and keep in mind, he hasn't shown any ill effects of that index finger when throwing the ball down the field. Dirking with the carry. Gain of four, Greg Jones with the tackle. Don't forget the state fire. Lambo coming up after our game. This day in the Big Ten. Here in this one, Purdue needs a win and a win next week against Indiana to become bowl eligible. Michigan State needs a win and a win next week to assure themselves of at least a portion of the Big Ten title and a chance of possibly going to the Rose Bowl if things break right for them. Working out of the backfield. Makes the catch, but doesn't do him much good. He's tackled immediately by Chris L. Rucker. He'll bring up third down. Here, can we have a more traumatic game? Michigan State fighting, scrapping for a Big Ten championship. Purdue fighting for their full lives. Both teams so much on the line. Every player is giving it every bit of what they have. Third down play, Blitz is on, knocked down by Frank Jones. Jones knocks it down, that's not the first big play he's been involved with. No, he's been making plays all day, but maybe none bigger than this. This time he's coming off the right side, watch him go right in. Kicks up off the ground. Big play. The guy that's meant so much to this Michigan State program. Chris Purdue's gonna go for it on fourth down at six. Henry, complete to his tight end. Adams has got the football. Oh, the guts of a cat burglar. A pickup of 14 yards for Adams. That's his longest gain of the season. And the guts and toughness of a quarterback. Keeping the play alive, extending it, allowing Adams to settle in the defense. Good job, good understanding. Guts on both sides. Well, makers with just one timeout. Maybe that's why they went for it on fourth down. Quarterback keeps it. Henry. Tackled by Chris Norman, a gain of five. Henry again. Has to watch the clock. He struggled with that today, managing the pace. Two and a half minutes. 
minutes to play. Clock running. Henry again has the football. There's a flag late. Could that be a late hit out of bounds? And if it is, will prove to be quite costly for the Spartans. After the play, unnecessary roughness, late hit. Defense, number 39. 15 yard penalty, first down. It wasn't uh, a huge hit, but it was a hit nonetheless, and it's a no-no when the quarterback goes out of bounds. Second time here in the second half that one of Mark D'Antonio's defensive backs has uh, been guilty of a late hit. Well, this is a Michigan State team that's heavily penalized. As Carissa alluded to earlier, they're last in the conference in penalties. Perhaps none bigger than that one. And it's so ironic, because as we look at the dean of discipline, so uncharacteristic of what Coach D'Antonio is all about. First down play, Henry wants to throw. Sets up a receiver screen and Edison is hammered. Kevin Pickleman's had a day. Great job of Pickleman running down the line and sniffing out the screen play. He just follows the ball, tracks it, tracks the receiver. It's major league. Like the tight end. They found Adams quite a bit today. Hitting the seams and in the hole of the defense. They want to run it. Durkin gets to the 20-yard line. Greg Jones on the stop. It'll bring up third down and long. Obviously, this is going to be four down territory, so they've got two plays to work with. Clock continuing to move. We're coming up on the one-minute mark. Henry's going to pick up the pace here. Blitz incomplete. He was looking for the tight end, Adams. Why is there not getting that ball outside? Throwing it over the middle. And again, it all starts up front. The pressure, Greg Jones, coming right up the gut. Forces Henry to get rid of the ball sooner than expected. Purdue has a timeout. They don't want to use it. They're just going to run this play. Fourth down and eight. Michigan State 
22 points in the final 11 minutes, and they continue on their quest to at least a piece of the Big Ten Championship. Senior day, emotional contest. Guys pushing past themselves. 7-0 season at home for Michigan State. Let's go down to Carissa. Coach, such an emotional season, emotional game. What does this win mean for you and especially for your seniors? Well, 10 win season, it's never easy as we move forward, you know, but uh, uh, guys just keep playing, you know, keep playing. I can't, you know, have to evaluate this one, but <laughs> we could have played a lot better, but we said it'd be a dog fight with Purdue. They're an outstanding football team. They, you know, they come to play every week. Congratulations on the win, Coach. Much, Thank you, guys. Thank you, Carissa. Well, fourth quarter is winning time. Michigan State in the fourth quarter. Two takeaways, a blocked punt, and 22 points to pick up the victory.